Let's talk winter trends you need to know for 2021 and 2022. Welcome back to my channel. It is your girl JB of Lil Miss JB Style, your pear shaped shorty style guru, fashion and lifestyle content creator for over seven years. Back to give you the tea on the winter 2021 2022 trends that you need to be aware of so you can just stay ahead of the game. Whether you want to be the first one in your friend group to rock the hottest trends or you're just trying to figure out what's worth spending your money on as you see these trends coming into the stores, I'm here for you and that is what this video is about. Hit that like button, also subscribe, don't miss a video from me. Not only do I share a lot of fashion videos, but really just all things chic and how to elevate your everyday life to help you get to that next level that you wanna get to. I'm gonna jump right into it today, starting with geometric prints, okay? At this point, this doesn't even feel like a trend anymore. I feel like this comes around every single year. There's some kind of like geometric, and usually it's like houndstooth, right? And I have this houndstooth coat from Zara, and I also have the matching houndstooth pants. These are gonna be some really easy ways to give this trend a try that also will not break the bank or be outdated in a couple of years. I always, always, always get complimented on this coat whenever I wear it. Another option would be maybe a fun blazer or even a skirt. This really is dependent on your personal style, one, and then two, kind of what winter looks like where you live. Living in the Midwest, it is cold, so a coat and pants for me makes the most sense especially considering these trends are more winter based, but that isn't to say you can't wear them beyond winter because as you know, I'm a firm supporter, wear what you wanna wear, when you wanna wear it, do not let these trends run your life, but it is nice to kind of be aware of them, so if you do have a piece in your closet, you could already look like you're ahead of the game. Next is color clashing, okay? So think color blocking, and the way that Pinterest is actually kind of talking about this is like dopamine dressing, so not just really bright and vibrant colors, but also consider high shine, and like bedazzling, right? You're gonna see a lot of this. I think the reason this is coming about in the fashion world is just because quarantine, COVID, people are tired of being inside, people are tired of being boring. And I think if you're like me, I'm realizing more and more and more, life is short. Wear the clothes, wear what you wanna wear. And I think that this is what this is an expression of. And if you're somebody who watches my video, you know I really don't mix and match colors a lot. Here's the way I kinda did it in summer. I'm really more monochrome. I'm the monochrome queen. One color head to toe, that is my jam. Some pieces that I own that are kind of in line with this, as well as some pieces I have purchased are this Nasty Gal suit. I've had this for like four years now. It gets all the compliments all the time. It's very bold, very bright, very easy to mix and match if I want to, but honestly, I usually wear it just as is as a suit, maybe with like some pattern or print underneath. I also have this sweater dress coming in the mail from And Other Stories. I'm so excited. I'm not 100%, I'm not 100 sold on the color, but I'm not 100% sold on this color because of my skin tone. But I will say after I got this Hanifa skirt and I saw the way that it made my skin glow, I'm a little more inclined to give colors like this a try, especially for winter. If you're thinking about high shine, think metallic, so gold jackets, silver jackets, kind of go with what makes sense for you. What I have in my closet, honestly, are these silver boots. I can't even remember what brand they're from, but these are like five years old. And I also have these sequence heels from ASOS that are also a couple of years old. So part of this is really understanding what you are comfortable with because I know colors can be a little difficult because of a few different factors. One, it might just be where you work. Your company might not allow really bright, vibrant colors. You might be required more muted tones just because of your like dress code. Sometimes you're worried about your skin tone. I very much like to look warm. I like to look tan. I really don't like to look pale like my winter shade. I dislike. So I try to avoid colors that make me look even more pale. But you might not care about that, right? So as you're thinking about the shine, as you're thinking about the colors, just keep in mind what makes sense for you and how you like to wear colors and how you like to mix and match metallics in those outfits. As someone who doesn't really wear a lot of metallics outside of her jewelry, for me, it makes the most sense for accessories, so bags and shoes. But you might really wanna try something bold and go all out and go for a coat. And I say go for it, give it a try. Another not surprising trend for me, at least, is knitwear, especially matching sets. I'm obsessed with knitwear. If you follow my Instagram, if you read my blog, you have seen me wear knitwear. I literally have bought three matching sets this year alone. This one from ASOS, this one from H&M, this one from NAKD. Knitwear always has a moment and I think every year it's just about how it's gonna kind of come out. Like sweater dresses are usually like a classic. You can never go wrong with like a chic maxi sweater dress. 
super comfortable, super warm, but also matching sets. So, so a lot of the loungewear you might see actually that are like matching knit sets would actually be really great that you can dress them up for the day. Here's how I dressed up my H&M knit set. And then also how I took the pants from this NAKD set and actually wore them out in real life. So there's a lot of versatility when it comes to knitwear and especially matching knit sets. So don't sleep on that. I would say just think about your day to day. So I, even though I have a dog, I did venture and get some cream because honestly she doesn't shed as much. But if you're worried about things that are gonna get dirty, opt for a fun color, opt for a classic brown, opt for navy. You have a lot of different options and it's gonna be a really great investment. You can mix and match knit sets, no problem. Like the sweater, you can always pair with your jeans. The pants, you can always pair with like a similar color, you know, crop top or something to give it a little more sex appeal, a little sexy, sexy for the winter, you know, if you live somewhere warm enough to do that. <laughs> so knitwear is one of those very wearable trends that I really think that if it's something that you like, it's definitely worth investing in because it will be something you wear year after year after year. So the next two trends I feel like go kind of hand in hand. You have one pieces, so think like cat suits, and then you also have leggings. So neither, again, neither of these are really new. I think like that's the really interesting part about some of the trends that we are seeing kind of emerge for 2022 is it's really not anything crazy different. And it's always just kind of what's the current rendition. So as far as the one pieces, honestly, I have a one piece, but I really wear it as a layering piece. It is my base layer for when it is cold out and I wear it underneath like a jeans and a sweater because for a really long time, I just was self-conscious about my body. I'm self-conscious about not having a super flat stomach. And so unless the one piece really fits me right, like this bird bee romper, if it doesn't fit like that, you're not gonna see me just wear it as is. I'm gonna use it to layer in a way that you're not gonna see it. I'm just gonna level with you. But if this is your jam, honestly, this with like a jacket, this with a cool winter coat, and some tall boots is gonna go a long way. It's super easy. I understand why it is a trend. I understand why people are loving it. Again, the right one piece, you're super cozy, it's super comfortable, it makes sense. But also if you live somewhere colder, this might not be the best option. And same with the leggings. So again, very rarely, if ever, will you see me wear leggings out outside if I'm not working out. That's actually more so just the way my mind works. I'm one of those people that I have a certain place where I like to work. I have a certain place where I like to work out and my mind kind of gets in that headspace, and I'm very much that way with clothes. So if I'm wearing like my lounge clothes, I'm lounging, like I will instantly go into like, ooh, it's nap time, give me like a little bit of kettle corn, let's put on some Hey Arnold, I'm chilling. But when I put on my workout clothes, especially like leggings and workout stuff, my mind is like, we are working out. So that's one of the reasons I just generally don't do athleisure on a day-to-day -day, like to wear outside. But as we're looking at leggings and legging trends, the stirrups are making a comeback. I'm mixed. I, I feel like if you want to make a statement and you want to do something different, that's great. I can see it under like a really cool kind of like dress. And if you have like the right kind of heels, I understand it. The other legging option that we're really seeing is faux leather, which is fairly obvious. It is winter. Leather is having a moment. So that's probably a more safer choice if you want to go into the legging trend. Again, just think about what makes the most sense for you and your style and what you feel most confident in. Before we get into the rest of the trends, I'm really wondering how much importance do you give trends? Do you feel like you are a slave to them? You have to try all the trends. Are you at a point where you've tried enough and you kind of can tell what trends are gonna work for you and what trends you just can pass up on. I'm really, really curious what your views on trends are and how they impact your style. Let me know in the comments below. The next trend, double duty, basically skirts over pants, dresses over pants. I've done this, okay, so here's a long time ago, probably like 2015, 2016, I did this the first time around. I get it in the right cases. like. If you have a really cool wrap dress that when the wind blows, it's gonna show you hoo-ha to everybody, yes, okay? Put on the jeans, put on the pants. But I feel like just putting on a dress and then just putting on pants underneath it, it's not, look, it's just not for me. It's not for me, okay? I'm not gonna knock people who do it. It just is not something that makes sense in my mind. And as someone who is truly practical when it comes to fashion and style, like even I have to draw the line. I'm just kind of like, that trend in my opinion is definitely, you're very fashion forward. You do not mind. Like you definitely wanna be different. You are definitely doing it because you love fashion and you understand fashion and you have that mindset where it makes sense, all right? I'm not gonna say that I'm that advanced in my style. And I also have accepted that, again, there are just certain things that I don't like for me. That does not mean I'm probably gonna see this trend on somebody and be like, oh my God. But I also know that when I try it, it's not gonna look that way. 
And that's just one of the understandings that you do need to have when it does come to some of these trends again. What, how it looks on someone else, it might take you some finessing and some some magic. I'm not gonna say magic, that's not the right word. But it's definitely gonna take you some time and some patience to make it work for you. And this is one of those that for me, I don't wanna spend that time and I don't have that patience. The next trend is a pattern. It is like the swirly pattern. I think they're calling it more. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but you've seen it. I'm not opposed to this pattern at all. I think the trick here is you have to find a pattern that makes sense for you and that you feel like is gonna be something you're gonna rock in a couple of years, right? Like for me, animal print, hound's tooth, that makes sense for me and I can see myself wearing that for years and years and years. And I have seen some of the renditions of this swirly pattern that I feel I could actually rock in a couple of years into my mid thirties, early forties. So I think you just have to be patient and really be picky. I would say that's definitely one of the things I stress often. Be picky, okay? If you don't love it, like from the pattern to how it fits and how it feels, send it back, don't do it. So this is one of those, I think, I think if you find a pattern that really resonates with you and you think is fun, give it a try. I would say definitely try this one. But again, be honest with yourself and be picky about it. If you really don't think you're gonna wear this beyond one or two wears, I wouldn't even bother. As always, Apre Ski has a moment for winter. We just love the whole rich, I can ski aesthetic. Even if you don't actually ski or you've injured yourself one too many times and you're not gonna ski because it's not worth getting injured a third time. But Apre Ski always has a moment. Think snowsuits, think the faux fur headbands, moon boots. This is very practical. I think if you are somebody who enjoys the outdoors, a good snowsuit actually makes sense. Like me walking my dog every day, rain, shine, snow, freezing temperatures, a snowsuit makes sense actually. Have a nice jumpsuit, throw it on, zip it up, wear some boots. It keeps me warm, I can move in it, her and I can walk, and it's great. You know, the faux fur headbands, if you've watched How to Look Expensive this winter, I am definitely all about, especially with short hair, it just makes sense. I even have these obnoxiously giant faux fur gloves from ASOS. Opera Ski at this point is not even a trend, it's like, it's a classic. There are parts of it that will make sense and are worth investing in, so just figure out which one works for you. And these faux fur gloves kind of bring me into the next trend, which is just like really fuzzy, furry accessories. I'm here for it. I love faux fur, again. I have these, these are some cute little faux shirling hand warmers that I got from H&M. Think oversized faux fur scarf. Think the Ugg Telfar collab with the like fur trim bags. You're gonna see a lot of faux fur everywhere. You're gonna see a lot of, and this is another trend that to me is just timeless. This just makes sense. So a good faux fur accessory honestly is also gonna keep you warm, like a good bucket hat. You cannot go wrong with a good pair of gloves. You cannot go wrong with as well. The bags with the faux fur trim, I will say to be careful with because one, depending, they can look a little tacky depending on how they're put together. But two, I don't think this is something that's considered a lot, but one thing I want you to keep in mind, your bag rubs across your clothes and across your body. So depending on the faux fur or the shearling that they use, it can start to look a little ratty, get really dirty, get really gross. So if you're someone who doesn't wanna have to do like the maintenance to keep their bag clean and always worry about like setting it down just nicely or making sure it doesn't get dirty, you might wanna skip out on the faux fur bags just because that's gonna be a hassle to kind of clean and keep looking nice. And a quick wrap up of just a couple more trends that I feel like really aren't trends, you just see them arise every winter. You have leather, leather's not going anywhere, a good trench coat, a good pair of pants. I scored this pair from H&M for $35, that is right. You're also gonna see denim, and denim is one of those things that just isn't going anywhere, to be honest with you. A good pair of jeans, a good denim jacket, like those are just classics. I think that that makes sense. I'm not surprised by that. And then lastly, it's called ruching. I am team ruching, this H&M skirt that gets me all the compliments. This shirt dress from Nasty Gal. Ruching, honestly, especially if you're pear-shaped, can be your friend. It can really snatchy snatch that waist, but give you room in the hips. And it's really forgiving. Like if you are worried about having a food belly, you bloat really easily. Ruching is your best friend. So don't sleep on it. Those are the top. There's definitely some more winter trends that you are gonna see for 2021, 2022. Which ones really resonated? Which ones are you super excited to wear? Let me know in the comments below. Again, I showed you a lot of the pieces that I already own and have had for a couple of years that line up with some of these trends. And that's one of the reasons I really stress being picky, being almost meticulous about what you add to your closet because Really, it can save you money down the line. 
I don't have to shop for half of these trends because I already invested some time and energy finding good pieces to begin with that have lasted over the years that I can now wear and look ahead of the game and on trend and stylish for the free free. So thank you so much for watching all the way through. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe, turn on the bell notification. Don't miss a video from me because if you don't already, check me out on the other social handles. Follow me on Instagram, especially check out my stories. That's where I share a lot of the pieces that I am eyeing up. I know they sell out pretty quickly and I get some complaints about that. So if you wanna stay ahead of the game in terms of what I am shopping, follow my Instagram stories. TikTok, I share even more fashion inspiration and some dances, just a little sillier side of me. Then there's Pinterest, not just what I'm wearing, but other outfits that are inspiring me. And of course, like to note where you can shop all the looks. So there's a lot of in-app exclusive content, a reason to follow me on each platform. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you found this helpful. I really want you to elevate and reach that next level and that you feel like I'm giving you the tools to do that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you in a couple of days for another video. Bye. Although it's been said many times, many ways,